Welcome to Teaching Artistry with Courtney J. Body. That's me. This is a podcast that celebrates artists and advocates for community engagement. And we, like you, are at home. Uh, during this time of social distancing and staying at home, we are interested in artists that are making art and inspiring others. So we are partnering with Creative Generation uh, in a new video series called Hashtag Keep Making Art. And I'm very excited about it already. I've had a few um, really amazing guests uh, who have helped me to, to under, better understand what's happening out there in um, what can be a very anxious and scary time. Uh, art actually is what we should be turning to to spark joy, to help with some um, different kinds of uh, wellness. And I'm really excited about our, for our guest. I don't know why I always think it's the first guest, but as if I'm like Oprah or something. But <laughs> um, in this partnership, the idea here is that we're meeting face to face. So let me go ahead and just get straight to our wonderful our, uh, guest, Idris Goodwin. Hi, Idris. Hello, Courtney. What's happening? What's hey, up? Well, I'm good. I'm well. I'm hanging in there. Um, it's really wonderful to see your face. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Likewise. Um, we met uh, uh, almost a year ago now, mm -hmm. and since then, like from that first meeting, we met at the TYA USA uh, mm -hmm. conference uh, in Atlanta, which I used to live in Atlanta for three years, oh, in the late 90s through the aughts, <laughs> early aughts. Um, and then the last time I saw you was uh, February uh, at the IPEI, um, I don't know what IPEI stands for, International Performing Arts the yeah, International Performing Arts, yeah. <laughs> I think it's for youth, I think it's for youth. But that's what I say, I say International Performing Arts, yeah. <laughs> and you are, uh, and TYA USA stands for Theater for Young Audiences USA, right? Yep, yep. And you're on the board of that, no? I am on the board of that, yeah. Excellent. So what, what is your role in, in theater, uh, theater for young audiences, arts education, arts? Sure, yeah. Um, so first and foremost, pri most primarily I'm a playwright, you know, um, I've written a lot of work for young audiences. Um, and that's tied to, to my background as a, as a spoken word artist, a break deep poet and an educator making my bones in the Chicago school system um, back in the, in the arts while you were in Atlanta. Um, but I also was recently the uh, producing artistic director of Stage One Family Theater, which is a, a theater for young audiences theater, 70 years old uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. That's what brought me to Louisville. Uh, but now I'm transitioning and I'm gonna become the, not gonna become, I am currently, I just started though. It's weird because I'm working remotely. Uh, uh, the director of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College, which is a multidisciplinary arts venue on a college campus. So it combines all my passions, you know, education, youth, the arts, but also the visual arts and theater, performing arts. Uh, but, but we also do a lot of work. Um, there's a youth ensemble, blah, 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 blah. So um, that's a very long way to say that uh, I'm a creative person, um, a community oriented person um, who's interested in multiple generations, um, engaging multiple generations. Wonderful. Uh, I, from the minute I met you, I thought you were pretty amazing and wanted to be like, near and around you. And anytime you come to New York, I'm like, come visit me. And then we never connect, but that's fine. It's fine. You're busy. Um, You're out here. You're out here meeting guests. And, you know. um, oh, no, I'm, I'm laughing on the, and it's shaking the camera. Stop, Courtney. Okay. So talk to me. Uh, well, first, I just wanted to say that I've been to Colorado Springs once in my life. I went there for a mm -hmm. colleague uh, slash friends, a friend, a league. Uh, their wedding. She's actually from there. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had, I struggled a lot with um, the altitude a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real. Um, it's real. But it's beautiful there. And I went Gorgeous. to, um, what is it called? God's Country or Seven, oh, the uh, Seven God, Falls? God. Oh, Seven Falls. Yep. Seven, seven Falls. Falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's gorgeous there. So I, yeah. um, I, I have reason now to actually visit again someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please do come through. We're gonna, we're gonna be doing some, some really exciting things there. I mean, it's already uh, a pretty awesome. I mean, it's a hundred years old. This, this, um, oh. this uh, institution. You know what I mean? And uh, they just recently merged with the college, but they've been around a long time, and, and it's a lot of story history and 
beautiful facility. I mean, that's why that's that's why I took the gig because it was a pretty pretty impressive, um, uh, you know, pretty impressive structure with a lot of great history, but then a lot of potential uh, for the future. And especially now with this moment we're in and the conversations that we're having in the arts about the role of art, about, about accessibility. You know, it's funny, like those of us in the uh, in the what I call the venue centric space, you know, theaters, museums, et cetera, et cetera, colleges, you know, we've been talking about access and inclusion and all that. And now that means something totally different where now the, the power dynamic has shifted where now there's a, a total level playing field, meaning that everybody's at home now. So now it, it's flipped. It's like, how are you now going to reach out to the person at home and you know, get them to click their button, you know what I mean? Um, which is a which is a big shift from, um, you know, we have all of these beautiful things and the barrier is the cost, you know, the barrier might be the ticket price or the subscription or how people feel when they come into the space. And now um, we're coming into your space, your personal space, and asking for you to give us a look. And that's uh, a radical shift. Um, we got, it's gonna take us a little while to figure figure out that. But I'm excited about it. That's an interesting thing that you're talking about around access. I hadn't thought about it exactly like that. Um, this idea of belonging, how the the uh, playing field gets a little bit flattened, if you will. <laughs> or, mm -hmm. um, but what we're struggling with here in New York, at least with um, it's very glaring uh, when it comes to New York City public school kids, how yeah. there's still young people who don't have devices to be able to go to school. There are families right. who may or may not have access to Wi-Fi, so that that that, um, that idea of belonging, that idea of find, you know figuring out those venue spaces, and now transitioning into uh, digital spaces, there's still a barrier, there's still inequity, and um, so that I think yeah, that's, that's what very said. true. No, that's very very true, and I, I and it does beg the question of like public Wi-Fi. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we have public libraries, which are now shut down, which is like a heartbreaker in this household, uh, especially for my poor wife, who is, a, who is a voracious reader and loves her public library. But, you know, I have a, we have a voracious reading son and I, you know, I love to go to the library. And so all of that is, that was a big blow. Uh, but it has made me think about, you know, public, public Wi-Fi. You know, we have public radio, you know what I mean? And, uh, um, and, and yeah, so, so that, that is a big challenge. Um, we have public television, we have public broadcasting, what about public broadcasting, yeah. Interesting, right? I mean, it, it's a conundrum and it's something that we should be talking about carefully and clearly um, and mm. being intentional about how we are inviting people to click on us, right? Um, mm. So you mentioned your family. I'm just curious, how have you all been um, doing in this time? We've been maintaining, you know what I mean? I, I think it's um, every day, you know, we're just, we're very mindful of each other. We, I think we're, we're very mindful of how each of us is doing um, just emotionally and where our energy is and when do we need a break or when do we need extra attention or when do we need relief? Um, I, you know, I think the thing that we're saying to each other is like, do not be shy about asking for what you need. You know, um, so the lines of communication, I think, are really, really clear. Um, everybody's trying their best, you know what I mean? These are very anxious times. We have uh, a six-month-old baby. And so when you've got little, little, you know, your sense of, of safety increases, you know what I mean? Your desire to keep everybody safe and healthy is pretty, is even more um elevated so um but it's great but at the same time it's also joyous because you know there are five of us here and that's probably not a situation that everybody has you know what i mean and so in, in many ways that's a blessing um but it is also you know it's it's everybody's different you know everybody's at a different age and a different you know what i mean so there's different needs and yeah. um you know so long story short um you know, there's just a lot of gratitude. We, we realize we're all so um, very lucky to be, you know, gainfully employed and we're all here and there's no space here. And, you know, Kentucky, while, you know, is, is dealing with it like any other state, you know, we are not one of the more um, harder hit places, you know what I'm saying? And um, 
and our governor is, is really great. You know, we got a new governor, Andy Bashir, who's doing a great job. Um, and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of hope. There's hope here, and we feel a little bit taken care of, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's day by day. It's day by day. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad that I didn't realize that you had a new governor. I'm glad about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I voted. That was, that was a, a ballot I was very happy to count. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, I, I'm really, I'm really happy to hear that everybody's like healthy and doing well and, you know, secure for, for, um, what can be quite a scary time. So I'm glad. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, let's, let's segue. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Let's segue to, you, you mentioned what kind of artist you are. Uh, I got your book. Can we kick it? Um, actually it's right, it's over here somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. and, uh, you just, you had a premiere recently. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we just put out a, um, well, a couple of new things dropped uh, recently. So, so, so to the book, uh, Can I Kick It, uh, we actually just put out, I collaborated with a, with a sound collective called Rhythm Science Sound, and we created the Can I Kick It mixtape, which is uh, 12 of the poems with original beats that they uh, created, 12 or 13, it's 12, I think it's 13, 13. Um, and so that just dropped. Unfortunately, it dropped like the day of like, where, where things got really extreme. <laughs> and so it was kind of a tough time to be like, hey, since you're going to be in the house anyway, you know. Uh, but yeah, so Can I Kick a Mixtape is out. It's available on Bandcamp and, you know, you can stream it, you can download it wherever you want to. Uh, but, you know, the poems are, as if you can't tell already, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a talker and, and um, and the poems have certainly have a, a life and, a, and they perform a certain way on the page. But when you hear them, there's a whole other quality uh, to them that, that, you know, and then accentuated by this really dope music that really sounds sound made. And then uh, just a couple of days ago, um, I released uh, a short film uh, that I uh, co-produced and, and co-wrote. It's based on a play of mine, but I co-adapted it, the script with the director, Sophie Cat. Um, and, uh, yeah, and we just, and it, it was doing the festivals and stuff like that. And then we, uh, we decided to release it, uh, this week. Uh, it's, a, like a 15 minute, uh, drama about these two college freshmen, uh, on there. And we follow them during their first semester. And it's about what hap what happens when they start unpacking. And I mean that literally and metaphorically. Um, well, why don't we watch a, I shared my screen. So why don't we watch cool. the trailer? What was the what inspired you to to make this? Um, so I, you know, it started as a play for the stage, and um, and you know, I, I'll, I I won't give away too much, but I'll sort of spoil a little bit of the surprise, which is that uh, the flag is um, a Confederate flag that the that the roommate hangs up, you know, but you know, in the much in the in the sort of way that that flag adorned the General Lee car on the Deuce of Hazard. Like there's this familiar there's this use of this flag to just denote Southern pride or like the sort of rebel nature and like go south, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's how some people view it. Um and to others they view it as this symbol of, you know, slavery. You know what I'm saying? And uh and so this, you have these two young women who have been communicating over the summer and are now about to start their first year class together and they're in the room and they're, you know, talking and then out comes, out comes the flag. And, you know, Sydney puts the flag up thinking it's no big, you know, this is me and this is where I come from. And uh, Deja, her African-American roommate, has to make a choice, you know, like I'm going to be in the room with this person for a long time and so 
when do I, you know, do I pick my battles? Do I, where do I fit, you know? And so a lot of it is about data negotiating that, like, where do I, what do I do here? How do I deal with this? You know, which is different than the sort of like, um, knee jerk thought we would, you know, if we're, you know, oh yeah, she put that up, I tell her this, that, and the third. It's like, well, sometimes it's not that cut and dry. You gotta let some people weigh the the, the repercussions of that. And so, um, but of course she doesn't stay completely silent. And so the film kind of tracks the journey over the subsequent month of how they negotiate uh, that thing. So for me as a dramatist, you know, I was like, this is an opportunity to, to you know, characters in one space, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, you know, that was, that was, this, oh, oh, you know what it was? You know what really sparked it? This was the time when it, we were having a lot of debates about statues coming down and flags coming down, mm. you know, um, you know, when is it time? I mean, these were things that have been up for decades, right? And there were some people saying, no, not, it's time now. Enough is enough. And that's really, and some people were like, well, but, you know, it's complicated. And to me, as a, as a dramatist, you know, really, ultimately, you're writing about relationships, and you're writing about the minds, and you're writing about those times where people want change, and then you want, and then the resistance to change. And so, yeah, for me, I'm like, well, let me just do it as a microcosm in a room, two people, and see what happens. Um, and then, you know, flash forward some years, you know, I was, uh, there were, there were all these, you know, really brilliant young artists that I was mentoring and teaching as a college professor. Uh, and, um, some of them had graduated, but were still around. And I was like, I really want to get into, get back into filmmaking, which was my first love. And, um, and so I was like, I think this might be, make a, a good, you know, short film. And so I started collaborating with the director, Sophie Cap, and then brought in um, a guy named Robert Mahaffey, who's a who's kind of a Swiss Army knife kind of kind of individual. And we sort of collaborated on it, co you know, produced it together, worked on the script together, um, raised the money together, and then sent it to the festivals together. And then we just, you know, released it together. So it was a really great collaborative process. But, you know, again, this thing of, young, you know, being around young people, you know, um, trying to empower young people and uh, provide the opportunities that, uh, you know, some of the opportunities that I have is something that I wasn't as a as an emerging creative. Uh, well, I look forward to watching the whole thing. It's a it's a short film. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's fifteen minutes. It's, yeah. All right. So thank you for sharing all of that. Do you yeah. wanna um, share a poem with us? Oh, from from Can I Kick It? Uh, please. Yeah, the show, the show. So can you show show the show the the cover? Yeah. Backwards, but. I'm just gonna say that I um got a got a got that delivered hand delivered to me, and I felt like oh, really? like kind of a rock star. I mean, it was FedEx or whatever, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that I, is, uh, yeah, it. I, I, I told that person to do that. I, I, felt I, uh, like like I was on the inside, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Good. Um, let's go with um. I'll do this one. This is um, uh, a piece. So, so you know, my name is a subject of much uh, conversation, um, and there's a poem uh, called "Say My Name," which um, is the one that I do the most. And um, and there's a really great video uh, that goes with that poem called "Say My Name," and it's it's you can find it on YouTube. Uh, but uh, I want to actually read the sort of part two of that poem that's in this book as well. Um, it's called, it's another poem about names. I love poems about names. Um, and this is a poem uh, that was uh, sort of my tribute. It started with me thinking about this great basketball player named Dominique Wilkins and, and how cool I thought the name Dominique was, that it's a French name, it's a French name, but it's also a very black name. Um, and uh, so that's where it started and then it kind of went somewhere else. So anyway, so this is a poem it's called Of the Lord from Can I Kick It? Of the Lord for Dominique Wilkins. Dominique means of the Lord, Latin rooted, French, black like Haiti. We like our names with peaks, slopes, and vowels. We like our names to be aerial and oral, throat and teeth and tongue. Our names gotta be song. Serena, Beyonce, Kobe, Kareem, LeBron, Abdul, 
Kyrie, Tucson, Andre, Kanye, Rashawn. Names that melt resumes, Draymond, DeAndre, Desiree, Shanice, Latisse, Lashana, Latoya, Kamani. Names that disrupt the roll call, Marshawn, Aliyah, Malik, Laila, Idris. Like the names of holy books, names that point to the world's face, coalesce here on this stolen continent, the European, the Middle East, the whole lexicon, the fields, courts, globe, palms, but never dominated. Give us onomatopoeic names, names with naps, names that's laid, that give shade, names that glide like Clyde, that fly like MJ or feet sliding in white socks on Motown 25, names with wings of predator birds, names like Dominique. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, for sure. It's fun to do. <laughs> So as we're wrapping up, um, I'm just curious, you know, you've got this new position in Colorado Springs. Uh, mm -hmm. What, as we are hopefully getting to a place where we will uh, be able to re-engage or reinstate social engagement as we right. have on it, uh, I'm curious about what do we do in, uh, leading up to that? Uh, and what will, what will be needed when we do return to what will feel yeah. some, something like uh, before? I mean, I think we got to go back to, well, I have a few thoughts. On and, and just uh, just that, make sure, I, I'm to be clear, it's in the arts, not like, you know, general. Oh, society, but it could, if you want to go larger, feel free. No, 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 no. I, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, well, one thing that, that um, I'm, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The one, the one thing about it that, um, gives me gives me calm or whatever, but that was not the right word for it. But is the fact that, you know, limitation has always been um, you know, great for creativity. You know what I mean? Um, hip hop culture, you know, comes out of limited resources, you know, and that's become a culture that has changed the world, you know. Um, so great things happen when there's paradigm shifts and also when people have to go back to the basics, which is like how do you engage people? simple, you know? So, you know, we've got this wonderful tool, which is the internet and, and technology. You know, we're in the information age. There is, there is, we do not have to stop engaging and telling each other stories and asking each other questions and being in dialogue. Um, case in point, right? Um, the second thing that I would say is we, I think we just have to really try not to look beyond too far and really be present in this moment and be doing the work of reflecting and thinking about where we're at right this moment right now like let's not um let's not um sell this moment short so to speak by thinking too much about what once we get out of here like let's be in here like we're in this and like what how is this changing us so, you know, because that's where the learning is going to be. Um, and then, you know, the third thing I would say is um, it'll be really important for us to once once we do, even though I just said, let's stay in this now, but when we do finally, um, can we socially engage again? Let's never obviously forget that, um, you know, what got us here and what were the what were the things that we neglected or forgot or um, put in the parking lot? Um, you know how could have how could have this moment uh, been different? You know, so really it's just doing that that real human work of you know um, looking back to look forward. You know, so um, you know these are the things we got to do. Is I think it's just everyone's got to be journaling a lot. Everyone's got to be imagining a lot, and everyone's got to be telling stories a lot and, and doing, using whatever tools available to, to reach out, you know, and just reach out and remind people that we're still connected and we're still out here. We're all going through this together and we're, um, but we need each other to, we still need each other to get through it. Wow. I, I don't, I, you know, I love to respond, but I actually think that I'd like to end there because I don't need to add anything. So I just want to thank you ever so much for sharing your art, sharing your words, your thoughts, your insights. And um, is there anything uh, that you want to end us on before I put my credits up? 
<laughs> um, no, just just thank you for the platform and, and keep doing what you're doing. We appreciate you and, and this platform and uh, just, you know, that's it, yo. Let's, let's stay connected. Let's keep talking to each other. Let's keep checking in on each other and, and maintaining. Excellent. Well, thank you, Idris. And thank you all for watching. Hashtag keep making art. I ask you to keep being creative, stay hopeful, spark joy for others, connect, and we'll see you next time.